Like it is what I would have called the Avengers Endgame of this universe. <laughs> um, wow. It's 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 intense, but yeah, you, you, I don't. Think, there's nothing else I can say. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Pop in the Culture, your weekly entertainment touch point. And me, well, I'm your host with the most mojo, of course. That's right, it's me, Mr. Hollywood Matt Demers. Such a fun show coming your way. I'll be speaking with Griffin Santo Pietro about his role as Anthony LaRusso on the hit series Cobra Kai. Try to get a scoop on season five for you guys as well, so stick around for that. But first, let's jump headfirst into those Hollywood headlines. All right, as we do each and every show, we kick things off with a bit of a uh, dissection in the world of entertainment. And uh, I always need help doing it. And guess who's here for the very first time? He's the channel manager over there at uh, Mojo Plays. Hey, Rob, how's it going? I'm great, Matt. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for for being here to help me... uh, pop some culture. Uh, We're going to get into video game stuff a little bit later. I love when I get the video game guys on because I dabble. (laughs) I don't know a lot about it. Uh, So if I can get any kind of recommendations, that'd be fantastic. But I do want to start with something that I do a lot of, and that is uh, watch TV. Um, (laughs) So we're going to do a little, what I like to call a TV check-in. What's your TV viewing? Are you a TV guy? I'm a bit of a TV guy. Uh, I guess the most recent thing I watched was uh, season two of The Witcher, I really enjoyed that um, over the holidays. Uh, I've been keeping up with uh, Book of Boba Fett too uh, recently. So yeah, that's been those have been my two uh, most recent watches. Season one Witcher versus season two Witcher. Which one do you think? Uh, I think best? season two was a, was a step up for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Because I know some people that were a little iffy after season one. They kind of liked it. I liked. I haven't seen season two, so I can't really give my uh, opinion. But I liked the way it looked. I liked Henry Cavill. It was a little, it was a little confusing, okay. Uh, but yeah, so I know some people are on the fence. So there you go. Yeah, I would give season two a shot. Okay, well, you mentioned one. Let's start with it. The Book of Boba Fett. I want to talk about this. This is a big one right now. It's streaming on Disney Plus. Few episodes are out. Um, this obviously is picking up after the events of uh, Star Wars: Return of the Jedi. We learn the fate of this character. Uh, what's what's your take? Because I mean. If you look at the the critical response, it's been really great. Critics mm-hmm. are liking it. Audience, I, I don't know. I think it's I think it's good. I think it's definitely positive. What's your take? I think it's good. I, I was surprised at how similar it feels to The Mandalorian. Yeah. To be honest, it really feels like a like a continuation of that story rather than its own independent series. Um, but uh, I'm enjoying it so far. I mean, I I do like The Mandalorian, so I'm not complaining in in any way. Uh, it was cool to get some background on on you know. Uh, you know a lot of the characters that we saw in the original trilogy. Um, you know the the Tuscan Raiders and, and and a lot of their yeah. story fleshed out. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's a good time. Yeah, I want to give it a few more episodes like, before I give my official judgment because right now it's just kind of boba meh for me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. Star Wars has got a lot on the go. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a new Obi Wan show. I know a lot of people are super psyched about this one. Uh, the movies. I don't know. What is it too much Star Wars or what are you looking forward to if anything? Well, I think a highlight for me is definitely going to be the Obi-Wan series just because of the cast. Like having Ewan McGregor and, and Hayden Christensen back is going to be huge, so that's like a must watch. Um the rest of the series have potential, but you know, a lot of uh more minor uh minor stories, I guess, uh you could say. Um so I don't think all of them will be a home run, but you know, there's definitely some cool stuff on the horizon. Yeah, Star Wars fans, uh, they're a picky bunch, but so far they've been liking what they've been getting. So that's so that's uh, exciting to see what comes through the pike. Uh, the other one I want to touch on, too, that just kind of had its season two premiere is a show called uh, Superman and Lois. Uh, this is on the CW. Uh, this is a big this is a big hit for them. Uh, Superman, by the way. I mean, do we even not need to talk about how massive he is? in the world of pop culture and his significance. Uh, So I'm so happy that he's got his own live action show. Obviously there's so much going on. Do they still call it the Arrowverse? Because Arrow's dead, right? I honestly, I have not really gotten into the Arrowverse whatsoever. It's kind of overwhelming for me knowing how there's like, I I looked, I looked this up and there's about 698 episodes so far of Arrowverse (laughs) shows. And that is just overwhelming. I, I, it's it's too late for me to get into. I think. 
I used to watch, uh, I used to be a hardcore watcher of The Flash. I loved the show The Flash. And then but my problem was I was watching it too late at night. And it was, <laughs> they started delving into like the multiverse, different dimensions. And I was getting, I was getting a little confused and it was keeping me up at night trying to keep track. So I, I stopped watching it. But I do recommend Superman and Lois because what we got here, Rob, is Superman with two teenage sons. Um, uh, him and Lois are married. And it's this kind of different dynamic that we've gotten over the years with, with Soup. So I think, I think it's definitely worth checking out. I think season two looks promising. Uh, are you a Superman guy? Like when it goes back to comics or some of the movies? Honestly, I have to admit I'm more of a Batman guy than a Superman oh. guy. I have a lot of Batman comics. Uh, I don't have anything against Superman. I just really like Batman as a character. Although I will say that I do like Henry Cavill's portrayal of Superman. Uh, he's he's He really nails it every time he, he does. does it. Yeah. He does. And we're all kind of waiting on the fate of that character because, well, Ben Affleck said he's done. <laughs> he's not doing Batman again. But as far as Cavill, I mean, there's still kind of hope i don't know uh, what's going on with the dceu uh, i hope they continue to make more movies uh but yeah it seems like it's kind of up in the air at this point yeah I, superman used to be king i don't know if he's still king like the, the crown might have uh, might have been taken by by batman who's got a, a sick movie it looks like coming out with robert pattinson cannot yeah. wait uh, for that one forward to that Okay, this is, this is a nice segue, Rob, into uh, movies because uh, what's happening now is, well, the world uh, is delaying movies once again, release dates. Here we go again. Some of the big ones, uh, Morbius <laughs> has, been, has been delayed now more times than the New Mutants. And that Isn't used that to be incredible? kind of That's six so times weird. Morbius has now been delayed. That, of course, being uh, the Jared Leto, um, it's, it's in the Spider-Man universe, if you will where he's playing that character. John Wick 4 is now off of the 2022 slate altogether. Uh, and then events. You got the Grammys are, are no longer on there. And, man, the Critics' Choice Awards. And I'm sure we're going to see more in the weeks to come. Does that, my question, uh, the one thing I'm worried about is, now, does this hurt the movie, right? Because I'm worried about Morbius. Because I was actually looking forward to this. But the more it gets delayed, I feel like, because look at New Mutants. It came out, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, but that I wasn't think, such a good movie to begin with. No, it wasn't. But I think the thing that saves Morbius is its connection or potential connection to Spider-Man. Because the hype yeah. for Spider-Man was so huge with uh, the latest movie. And, uh, you know, we've seen in the Morbius trailer, they, they, they name drop Venom. There's a, a, the Vulture makes a cameo. So there is a definite connection to Spider-Man. And uh, fans are going to be watching that movie just to see if there are any other Easter eggs or connections that, that are made. Yeah, I think Morbius will be safe. I think Morbius will be definitely safe. Uh, I like these kind of Spider-Man villains getting movies. I know there's a Craven one Yeah. in the pipeline. I think that'll be interesting, Craven the Hunter. Uh, okay, so that's, that's in the movie front, but now we're going to switch gears to the video games. This is in your wheelhouse, Rob. Uh, so what I've done is I've asked you to come up with maybe some recommendations. People out there want to play some games, or maybe we look ahead to some new games. You tell me, what do you got, what do you got for us today? Sure. Yeah. Well, I'll do. I'll do uh, both of those things. Uh, for anybody who does have a PS Five, um, one of the games that I really, really enjoyed was Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Highly recommend that for any PS Five uh, players. Uh, if you haven't already, because it's one of few PS Five exclusives uh, that are out at this point. But it's it's a really good experience if you haven't tried it. Um, for people who might still be on last gen, a game that I, I really enjoyed was uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, for anybody who likes um, big heard, open world uh, games. Yeah, I've heard of this one. Um, actually, the guy, <laughs> my barber, the guy that cuts my hair, was talking about that one. So yeah, I, I, word of mouth seems to be pretty good on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, looking ahead, I mean, February is a big month. We have uh, Horizon Forbidden West coming out. Uh, Elden Ring is another big game, Dying Light 2, and, and others. So that's going to be a huge month. But what I'm particularly looking forward to most is uh, Gran Turismo 7 in March. I'm a, I'm a big uh, racing game fan, and uh, Gran Turismo has been one of my favorite series. So it uh, looks like they're going back to, uh, back to their roots with uh, GT7. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, no, I've heard some stuff about that as one as well. Um... Superhero uh, games coming out. Is there anything exciting? I remember seeing something about a, uh, a Wolverine game. Is that? Do we have a release date on that? There's no release date on that, but they have. Uh, they did drop a trailer, so that's going to be made by Insomniac, the same, the same studio that made uh, the Spider-Man uh, game on PS4. 
Yeah. Uh, so that's very exciting. Uh, always love more Marvel games. Uh, as well as uh, two that are coming out this year, uh, Gotham Knights, uh, set in the DC Universe, and uh, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. So those are two big ones. Nice, out. nice, nice. Are you a fan of horror video games, by the way? Uh, not particularly. No. I'm a little bit of a coward when it comes to horror stuff in general. <laughs> Some of the horror video games are actually pretty terrifying. Uh, and I'm a horror movie guy, so I, I, I might... Uh, might check out some of the new ones. I know there's going to be a Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, which is which could be fun. Yeah, I've heard amazing things about Resident Evil Village, uh, mm. one of the one of the biggest games of last year. Haven't played it myself, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's gotten tremendous reviews. So amazing, amazing. All right, well, I want to know what you guys out there are playing. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Drop it in the comments and let uh, me and Rob know. But Rob, I I need you to do me a favor. Don't I don't go anywhere. Because me and you, well, we got to go beyond the list. All right, Rob, what we do each and every show is we uh, dig deep in the vast archives of Watch Mojo. We pluck out an old top 10 list and we uh, like to go beyond that list with our own personal opinions. This is about me and you. What we think, did Watch Mojo get it right? Did they get it wrong? Uh, is there any that they left out? So today should be fun because what we're talking about is the top 10 hated movie characters uh i love me some movies i'm a film critic and uh, i watch all the genres uh what's your movie watching habits rob what do you like what do you gravitate towards a bit of everything uh i like me uh, some action movies i'm a, a big sci-fi guy so uh yeah i dabble in those a little bit before we get in uh sci-fi dune one of my favorite movies of the year denny villeneuve did you I actually have not had a chance to watch you it yet. You haven't seen it? No. Oh, man. Yeah, no, no. Oh, God, oh, you, Rob, you're going to watch it and your mind's going to be blown. I definitely how... will. I definitely will. It's amazing. It really is amazing stuff. All right. So today, it's not about amazing. It's about the hated. Uh, these are hated movie characters across film for various reasons, as we'll find out. Uh, number 10, we're kicking things off with Willie Scott, Indiana Jones, The Temple of Doom. You know what people hate? The annoying sidekick. Uh <laughs> Did you, what did you think of Willie Scott? I, I, I agree with this. this. Yeah, good pick. Uh, Temple of Dune, in my opinion, is probably the weaker of the, the three uh, original Indiana Jones movies. So, yeah. you know, there's, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't awful, but it wasn't great, too. And I think he's a character that just, uh, you know, it doesn't add anything to the movie. <laughs> I was going to say, it didn't help. He didn't no. help the movie. Yeah, some of those characters... Yeah, make it worse or definitely don't help. Uh, number nine, this one's interesting because I see this online. I see memes about this guy uh, called Grandpa Joe in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, 1971, the original. People hate this guy, Grandpa Joe. And I was confused. I'm like, well, what did this guy do? Because it's been a while since I've seen it. <laughs> Have you seen this movie, by the way? It's been so long. I, I can barely remember... I only remember Grandpa Joe uh, sleeping in a bed. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what his deal is. I don't remember hating him particularly, so I'm not sure why uh, he's appearing here. Well, apparently, apparently, he pushes Charlie uh, to break the rules, nearly gets him killed, and almost makes him lose the competition. So they're saying he's not a very good role model. And I think you're right. I think he's just a kind of grumpy, bedridden grandpa. So people just did not weren't having it. Sorry, well, Grandpa. I guess not. Grandpa Joe. Okay, number eight's fun because this takes me back to my childhood. Uh, another movie that, that I haven't seen in a while, but I do remember uh, hating Matilda's family and the principal here. This being, of course, the movie Matilda. Yes. Uh, what a, a childhood classic. And I think you're going to see a lot of movies where like the that school uh, authority figure, right? The principal, the teacher, not very liked. I'm yeah, thinking everybody of, like, hates the teachers in movies for some reason. The Breakfast Club is one where the you know the vice principal people hate him, but this one yeah. especially, definitely yeah. another movie that I haven't seen in years, but I do remember the principal. It sticks out. Yeah, definitely. All right, this one's going to stick out for those that like them some horror and may have seen a movie called The Mist. This is an adaptation of Stephen King's novel. Uh, the character that everyone agrees is the worst, myself included, is Mrs. Uh, Carmody. Have you seen this movie? I know you said you don't like the horror video games. Do you like the horror movies? I'm not a horror enthusiast by any means. I haven't seen The Mist, uh, so I'm not familiar with this character. But I do enjoy uh, Stephen King's work uh, quite a bit, especially the his books. 
yeah the movies, so the movies are i have uh, they're hit or miss but the books are generally very good they are definitely hit or miss this one's i think for the most part the miss is good i'd kind of recommend it i mean this character um <laughs> she's just everyone's kind of trapped in the supermarket because there's this mist and mysterious stuff that's going on outside and she's this uh religious fundamentalist and she is just yeah bitter spiteful and she's convinced that uh, the mist is is divine punishment from God, so she's going on all these ser- uh, serums rather, and yeah, people just don't like her, and myself included. <laughs> all right, we're gonna switch gears here because I think the reason why, well, uh, what we've seen is characters, well, maybe Indiana Jones not so much, but characters are made to be hated. Number six on the list is Bella Swan. She is the main character in the Twilight franchise. She is hated, of course. I think we we're supposed to like her. Kirsten Stewart, what do you think? Uh, I think, you know, this is a this is a unique situation because I think this, this this movie series just blew up in popularity so so much that, uh, you know, it's not intended to be for everyone. It's kind of like a teen uh, drama series um, and it reached such yeah, a wide not, audience. I don't think, we're not the target audience. No, so it's natural that, Me, you know, yep. the, a lot of these characters <laughs> receive hate because, you know, there's a lot of people watching them or being exposed to them that, aren't the target audience. So the actors got a lot of hate because they were saying that Bella Swan, the character on screen is very wooden. You know, she has the, the, the personality of a cardboard box. But I mean, look at the actors now, right? Look at their resumes now. So Stewart on her way, maybe going to be nominated for an Oscar. Mm-hmm. I think so for Spencer. Look at Robert Pattinson. Hello. He's Batman. And uh, I mean, he was in Tenet. He's been uh, really knocking it out of the park. So I think, I don't think we should place blame squarely on the actors in the situation. I think it has a lot to do with the, the writing, the direction, yeah, the directing. Could be everything. that they were, it was just earlier in their careers. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, they've definitely done great things uh, since. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so uh, here's another character that I think we were supposed to like, but we absolutely hate, and I am shocked that this is only number five on the list. Watch Mojo. I would have put it maybe. I hey, I would have maybe even put it number one. Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Why? That's definitely. Why? Uh, Star what Wars franchise, the prequel, obviously. I actually and Rob, I actually tried to rewatch the Phantom Menace. I tried to rewatch it because Disney Plus has them all, and I was like, in a very. Uh, I mean, a lot of the Star Wars films are good. Even some of those prequels, not bad. The Clone Wars, probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. But I really hated Jar Jar Binks, even all these years later. Yeah, with, he's with very my, irritating. Why was it just supposed to be like comic relief? You think on on the part of George Lucas to probably? I always I always think back to the fan theory that I've heard many times about him being a, a, a Sith Lord in, in disguise, <laughs> uh, which I think improves his character greatly. So I kind of like pretend that that's uh, that's true. Okay, so next time I watch it, I will have that in my head. Maybe it'll make me get through it. All right, let's see who's worse, uh, more hated than Jar Jar Binks. Okay, number four is a character that uh, I think was meant to be hated from the Green Mile. One of the best movies of all time, people say. And Percy um, Wetmore, he is the prison, uh, the prison guard, right? For those death row inmates. Right. And I hated that guy. Yeah, but that's a yeah. character that you love to hate because he does his role so well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but he, yeah, job well done. I hated yeah. him. You'll see a lot of that too, kind of like teachers, the prison wardens, prison guards. Those are usually hated characters as well. Yeah. There should be a distinction made between characters that are meant to be hated and ones that are yeah. unintentionally hated. <laughs> exactly. Number three, I th- it obviously meant to be hated. Uh, Nurse Ratchet from uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I yeah, mean, so definitely. hated, so memorable that she got her own show on Netflix. That's right, yeah. all those years later. Uh, what a great performance and what a great role. And yeah, absolutely terrible character. Does all kinds of nasty, <laughs> unthinkable things while she's in charge at that institute. Uh, so no no, uh, no arguments here. Okay, number two is interesting. I want your thoughts on Lex Luthor in Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg, Rob. Yeah, I was not a fan of Jesse Eisenberg's take on Lex Luthor. It uh, it did not uh, resonate with me. I, I thought it was really weird and over the top. Uh, yeah, I just couldn't uh, couldn't get down with it. 
I think he nailed it on the head with weird. I think he made some weird choices as an actor for this role because we've seen it played by Gene Hackman in the previous Superman movies, the originals. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Kevin Spacey did one. We've seen it on TV and cartoons. And mm -hmm. his was completely different. I, I like when actors take chances, but <laughs> I don't know. Because he was in, uh, what was the movie? The Social Network. Yeah. He just, he basically needed to play that same character, mm -hmm. right? Smarter than everyone else, kind of slimy, you know, backstabby. He basically just needed to do that role over again. And instead he did some weird stuff with a Jolly Rancher. Yeah, it was a little too wacky for my taste. Yeah. Uh, and earlier we talked about how we hope that Henry Cavill has a, a new Superman movie coming out because we like him in the role. I mean, yeah, we he might, nailed it. We might be stuck with Eisenberg as his Lex Luthor yeah. in the same universe. I don't know. All right, here's some honorable mentions. These are these. Let's get to these because one that I was uh, hoping to see on the list isn't here yet. So maybe it's number one. Maybe it's an honorable mention. We start with uh, Cal uh, Hoakley in Titanic. I hated some Cal. No, no arguments here. Mm -hmm. Not a very nice guy. Skids and Mudflap. This is from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, 2009. Took me a second, and then I remembered, oh, yeah, I did not like them. Almost Jar Jar Binks level annoying. And, all, and also, like, stereotypical semi-racist. Yeah, I had pretty much erased that movie from my memory. But, uh, yeah, thinking back, yeah, I, I do remember those, those two. Yeah, weird characters, good. yeah. Not good at all. Uh, okay, here we go with Harry Potter, the Dursley family. Mm -hmm. Yep, I was waiting for Harry Potter to make an appearance here. Yeah, uh, the Wedding Crashers is is here, 2005. The character that we hate is Sack Lodge. Brad, is that? I think that's Bradley Cooper, right? Yeah, I think so. That I actually really enjoy his performance in Wedding Crashers. Like, oh, he's, me too. He's an entertaining villain. Like I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say that I hate him. He's he's kind of like uh, like satisfyingly obnoxious to me. I don't know. <laughs> yes. That's a good way to put it. No, I I think you're right. And I love Bradley Cooper as a as an actor. You will see a similar side of him in a, a movie called Licorice Pizza that just it's out. It's a Paul Thomas Anderson. Bradley Cooper comes at the very end of the movie. Mm -hmm. 20 or so minutes steals the movie <laughs> so great and he's like playing that obnoxious guy I don't want to give any spoilers because I do think that movie's worth watching yeah, and discovering awesome. uh, what he does okay number uh, oh no we're not number one yet we're still at those honorable mentions we gotta mention Buzz McAllister from Home Alone Kevin's brother I hate I didn't like him yeah he's a total jerk the, remember the choir scene and he Kevin has the big solo and Buzz is playing drums on his head with the little yeah, awful. And then and then that fake apology at the house afterwards. Yeah. Just so, bringing it home. So you love to hate that character. So good job. By the way, the actor, yeah, he's got some trouble in his personal life. But, Rob, hey, if you ever want to, like, stay at the Home Alone house, it's now an Airbnb. And, as a bonus, Buzz, the actor that plays Buzz, uh, will greet you at the door. That's a real thing. Must cost an arm and a leg, but uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I think, was it Rebecca that I had on? We talked about that, and we were like, what would we do in the house? And we thought that we would just kind of do what Kevin does, you know, jump on the bed, eat ice cream. Toboggan down the stairs. That would be number yeah. one thing, that, <laughs> for sure. Just set up booby traps. Just do all the stuff. Just recreate all the stuff in the movie. That'd be great. All right, here we go. Aha. Uh -huh. Sorry, just taking a look at the number one pick for Watch Mojo's most hated character of all time. It is from Harry Potter. It is the one I was thinking of. It's Dolores Umbridge. Uh, a lot of hated characters in that franchise, but Dolores Umbridge, to me, tops that list. What says you? Yeah, it had to be a Harry Potter character. Um, I'm kind of surprised that uh, Snape or the Malfoys didn't even make an appearance on the list. I think they qualify. I know uh, Snape had his re redeeming uh, qualities towards the end, but for most of the series, he was a very, very hated character, and Alan Rickman had an amazing uh, oh, performance love... in that role, too. So. I love Alan Rickman so much. Yeah, no, Watch Mojo is calling Umbridge uh, petty, two-faced, cruel. Uh, she does her worst to not only suppress the students, um, but also takes away their sense of joy. She literally tortures that them. That she does, yeah. She tortures them, yeah. Can't Thanks argue with that. Umbridge. So there you go. Those are hated characters in movies. Not going to disagree too much, although my one, my one gripe is with Jar Jar, which I would have put a yeah, lot closer. Yeah, he deserves the number one spot, I think, in my opinion. Can't forget. 
Never forget. Uh, hey, Rob, we want to invite everyone else out there to give us uh, their thoughts and who they hated in movies. Uh, drop in the comments. And I want to thank you so much, Rob, for all your uh, all your discussions and thoughts today. Thanks My for pleasure. Me pop the culture. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. It is now time for our Mojo Chat of the week. All right, in case you've been living under a rock, uh, season four of Cobra Kai uh, is uh, back on Netflix, and I'm sure a lot of people have already completed their binge, and if you did, well, you noticed a lot more of this guy. That's right, my guest today. Hey, Griffin, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, and I I was just telling you uh, previously that I'm obsessed with this show. (laughs) I can't get enough, honestly. Like, it is, it brings me so much joy, and like, I'm not alone. People love their uh, Cobra Kai. Now, I said at the beginning that there's a lot more of you in this season. Uh, so for those that haven't checked it out, I kind of set the stage. What can we expect out of your particular character? Yeah, um, well, I'd say you finally get to, you know, after all these seasons, you finally get to learn finally. more about Anthony. <laughs> finally, yeah. And I think a little more, he's less of just the entitled jerk that we saw earlier, you know. Um, you said it. You said yes, it. Yes, he yes. He was a brat. He was a brat. Come on. <laughs> for sure. Totally. And I like that they didn't like totally change the character. They just kind of, you get, you kind of basically get to see that he's not necessarily a bad person. He's just hanging out with the wrong people. Um, and he's just kind of misguided, but I thought it was, I think fans can expect a lot, you know, like no. there's just, it was really, really great getting to do that. And it was cool because it kind of subverted your expectations, right? Because you're mm. Daniel LaRusso's son and you're a bully. Like that's like the opposite of yeah. what his story arc was. Right. Uh, and I think that kind of speaks to, um, Okay, I'm a little old, but your generation in particular, uh, when it comes to bullying, especially there's moments where there's the virtual bullying, right? So I don't know. What do, what do you think of the takeaways of that? Because I think that's kind of important. Yeah, no, I thought it was very, very interesting because, um, you know, a lot of times on the show, it's been like like the physical aspect of bullying, like we saw in like the Karate Kid. But I would say that this one, not only do we get to see like the realistic side of cyberbullying, but we also see... Anthony, like you get to see the bystander's point of view, I guess, mm. which is something that you never really get to see. Like that's never really explored, but it's like, I'm sure there are a lot of kids who can either relate to this or know people who can relate, who are just, if you're just with the wrong people, sometimes you can end up in bad situations, you know? Yeah, um, no, I, yeah, absolutely. And so I think that was, re- I think that was really interesting for them to go that way with it. It really was. It really was. Um, you mentioned the Karate Kid. Obviously, that's what this whole thing is based on, a reboot slash sequel slash mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, nostalgia overload. Um, did you, <laughs> obviously, this came out way before you, you were born yeah. in, the, in the 80s, uh, the Karate Kid. Have you seen, I'm assuming you've seen them. When was the first time you've kind of seen them, if you have? <laughs> no, no, I definitely have seen them. Um, I would say the first time I watched it was when I was like, 10 or something when my my grandpa we used to show me like older movies so this um, is before you got on the show you yes you discovered yeah, once it. before oh, i okay. got on i had seen i believe i'd see the first two but i only remembered the first one um and then i watched the second and third i think this is last summer or the summer before i like binged this the second and third movie um but yeah i definitely saw the first one a few times before getting the part okay and so someone that's seeing it not back in the 80s what was your impression of it because this is a cult classic this is one that that i love um but but you know a lot of times you see young people that watch old stuff like whether it's a music video or tv show or maybe you're like what (laughs) what's that about yeah um yeah i would say that i mean like i said my grandpa used to show me a lot of old movies and i would say that karate kid was definitely like my one of my favorites if not my favorite that i saw at the time i think this was just it was so it was so cool you know it was just it was it was so it was just a kid doing karate like that's so cool to me um especially at that age um and I just remember being a like I remember what was it oh yeah it was um um Mr. Miyagi I was like a huge fan of yeah when I was a kid um which I thought was a weird way for a kid to go (laughs) um but I just loved that I thought it was so cool it was. And it, it definitely is. Um, so, the, so being on set, I mean, take us, uh, take us behind the scenes. People want to know, you know, what's the dynamic? I mean, there's lots, there's lots of characters on the show. Obviously, you have your, uh, you know, your main characters, and then, and then you uh, trickle down to like the students, and then the kids, and the, and the siblings, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, what, what goes on behind the scenes uh, during filming? Anything? Is it chaotic? Is it, <laughs> is it all business? Um, A little bit of I fun. I would say what? that. Um, okay, well, it's, it's 
depends because it's like um i had like like season four i had these like younger like the bully group mm-hmm. which and then the like kids that age was like dallas and una and then there was like the slightly older kid group with um you know sam and hawk and everybody and then there are the adults that i think last season i got to work with all three of those groups at, a few times yeah um i would say that throughout all of them what especially just being on set has taught me is that i think everybody has like the best balance of fun and professionalism where like people can you know goof off and stuff but i don't feel like there's ever a time where we're super like behind because of people um i would say definitely with that younger group though of bullies like we like that was probably the hardest people to work with not like from my perspective i'm talking about from the director's perspective we were talking like we were just laughing the whole time we were playing um oh we were oh we we were playing like the knuckles game it's called bloody knuckles or something because they were playing in the background so we also like it was it was like it, it was i would say that was the most chaotic group um and then just from there up it got less and less chaotic that's awesome um yeah no and and then we saw you at the end during the the karate tournament did you get to meet carrie underwood i did i did i have i didn't post it yet but i have a picture because i got nervous about when i'm supposed to post it um i think i'm actually gonna put on my story soon but i did i did i we got to watch her perform um her whole song which was so cool because it's like it was pretty much like the first concert i've ever like concert i've ever really been to because the minute I started wanting to go, oh, COVID hit. Um, and I remember, oh, I remember the funniest thing was that in the script and whenever people were talking about it, they were, she was, they had a different name for her because they didn't want to spoil it. Carry on. I forgot what the name was. Um, but <laughs> so essentially there's supposed to be a shot where like me and then there's like my mom and there's like Courtney and Vanessa and everybody. Uh, we're all supposed to be dancing to her. But at the time, they didn't want like anyone around to know who it was. So we were dancing to absolutely no music. And it was just the director saying, dance, dance, dance. And we're all sitting there dancing. Um, I luckily, I believe it got caught. Um, Because I think I was just jumping up and down completely off feet. Um, But uh, yeah, and then later we got to see her perform and I got to take a picture with her. Um, But that was fun. That was a really cool day. It was like all one day we shot that. Yeah, that, that does seem definitely uh, like a lot of fun. I ha- okay, I have to mention your hair. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because you've got the, and I'm looking now, I mean, you still got like this intense flow. Yeah, this of, is, like, I'm like pushing it back. Like I have, I am in, I have a lot of hair. <laughs> what was the last time you got it cut? Or, uh, not that Dude, I, I, I don't, I think I'm, I think I'm due for one, but um, <laughs> I can't, I literally cannot remember. Like the last time I got it cut was, had to be this summer. Like it couldn't have been it, or maybe like right before we filmed season five, is when I got a cut. Maybe um, you should just kind of that because it's now part of your character. Like you've got like this. <laughs> yes, yeah, I would say they finally like like you know they they do it a little weird in the show in season four specifically. Um, they just kind of like come in, or I I I call it like they make it. I I say that they make it look like a Lego piece. Um, <laughs> but um, I would say towards the end, I don't know if you if, towards the end if you ever noticed my hair like consistently gets more and more like it naturally looks it's comp- it's not it was not a choice on anyone's part it's just completely because I, I was in between takes just going like this and shaking it up <laughs> which would annoy the hair people so bad but I just I wanted to do it because I didn't like the the flat I'm sure I think I don't think hair people would like me because I don't let anyone touch my hair except for my barber so I'd be like what are you doing don't let it let it let yeah me do it. uh you mentioned season five you obviously can't say anything I know I know the rules um can you tease can you give us something anything i don't know season five is good i can tell you what it's going to be awesome and it's going to be i would say it's going to be like it's like just not even getting to see everything just reading season mm. like parts of season five was like insane like it is what i would call the avengers endgame of this universe <laughs> um wow. it's 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 intense but yeah you, you, i don't think there's nothing else i can say yeah, no, I think uh, I, I think we've all come to expect, you know, half the half the fun of watching the show is the surprises and seeing the revelations come about. But this is a show that it gets bigger and better every every single season. So you yes, saying yes. that just gets me uh, even more excited. Uh, okay, oh, yeah, well, yeah, season five is going to be great. <laughs> well, let's talk about you for a second. Um, what are some of your interests outside of the show? I mean, obviously, we know you as this character, but what's what's Griffin like outside? Like, what? Are, what do you like to do? Are you into karate? 
No, no, I, I, I think every, like every kid, I took karate for a little bit when I was like eight, but oh. this last summer I started boxing with my friend. Oh. Um, it wasn't anything too crazy and we, I haven't had time since the summer to do it, but I really like it. I'm going to try to get back into it when I have the time, but that was cool. That was like, I thought, I, I thought might as well. Right. Just like, yeah. cause I'm no, I'm not like a physically active guy, but I thought boxing would be something that I think would be so rad that I would do it no matter what. Um, and so I started that this summer. Um, I've talked about this. So I like, I'm so glad that I get to talk about this now, but I am a huge comic book fan. Um, oh, yeah. Me too. I love, I love me some yeah. comics. Yeah, no, I've been, I'm I've been for a while since that's like a con- consistent thing in my life, even before acting. Um, and yeah. And then I guess right now, I mean, what are you reading? What are you, a fa- what are you a fan of? What comics do you, do you gravitate um, I to? I just, I just read, um, I was just reading some new Spider-Man stuff. I'm getting really, into, I think after seeing No Way Home, I mm. had like a Spider-Man fix. Like I have just been, I bought, I just got Spider-Man Life Story for my birthday, which oh, I, I love that one. Yeah. Great. Um, I just read Spider-Man Web Shadow, I believe it's or Spider Shadow or something. Um, it's like an alternate story. Um, and I've been for the past like a couple of months, I've been reading all of the Invincible series. Um, I'm almost I, I I have one more like compendium this big to get through, and then I'm done with the entire series. Um, but yeah, it, those are fun. like the two things that I'm like actively reading, and then every now and then I'll pick up something else. So acting, uh, Griffin, obviously this, I mean, you're starting young. Uh, Is this something that you want to continue doing outside of the show? Because, I mean, you just mentioned Spider-Man, maybe MCU. I mean, maybe we can scoop (laughs) you up. Uh, Is that aspirations for you to continue going and branch out? Or is this? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. This is one of those things where I just can't imagine myself doing anything else. You know, like literally, I can't think of one job I'd be rather, I'd rather have. Um, no, it's great. It's, this is definitely what I want to do and what I want to keep doing. Um, but yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because I have always thought that I, I have always wanted to be Spider-Man. And then just just recently, like in the past week, I saw like two things on like TikTok and Instagram of people putting my head on Spider-Man. <laughs> and I was like, finally, people are finally come on, guys. Hey, we're Marvel's all about the multiverse. So Amy Pascal right? over there at Sony. Hello, Griffin. Call, call exactly. Please. He's ready. He's ready to go. You know? He's got the moves. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, listen. Hey, I appreciate your time today, and and uh, and like I said, season four kicks butt. How could it yeah. not? Uh, Cobra Kai. It's over there on Netflix, and we've got. Uh, well, we're gonna have to wait with bated breath for all the news about season five, and when it happens, we'd love to have you back on to chat more about it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited. All right, Griffin. Well, I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for helping me pop the culture. Well, that's going to do it for another episode, everybody. My thanks to Rob for joining in on all the fun. And of course, Griffin. So great to talk with him about Cobra Kai. Still my favorite show. Uh, And hey, thank you for watching and listening. If you have anything you want us to chat about, drop it in the comments. Until next time, I've been Mr. Hollywood. Popping the culture.